guys, it's me, Hope Vlog. I'm back here with another um extension to this very beautiful Jerry fanfic. Currently right now, got on my hoodie downstairs in the basement and about to go back to where we were left off on draw line. If you're wondering why I'm not doing this on Sunday and Saturday, it's because I have to stay up until 12 because that's when I have to take my next pain pill. So, you know, it's interesting. Okay. Um, I guess we were on 35, the first Quidditch match. And here we go. Harry woke up, woke up on Saturday with the sun glaring into his eyes. Groaning, he turned over, only to realize he couldn't. Looking down, he realized why. Jacob was laying across him, armed. I'm really sorry if I'm repeating myself from last time. Just don't know where I'm, like, left off at. Harry hadn't realized he had fallen asleep in Draco's bed last night. Instead of trying to turn over, Harry just mushed his face in the back of Draco's neck. Running out of contented sigh, I guess? As he caught the scent of Draco's shampoo, Harry slipped his arm around Draco's waist, pulling him closer to himself. Hmm, Draco mumbled. Rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, Harry continued to cuddle him, cuddle up to his back. Morning. Good morning, love, Harry said, placing a kiss on the back of Draco's neck. Draco smiled, shifting to turn to, to turn and look at Harry. Draco and Draco met Harry's lips as he settled back into Harry, his arms snaking around Harry, pulling him closer. Harry slowly pulled away, pressing another soft kiss to Draco's forehead. The first Quidditch matches today, Harry said, pushing Draco's hair out out of his face gently. Draco did not open his eyes, only humming in respect and humming in response. Gryffindor versus Slytherin. You're going to it. You're going to it, right? Yeah. You should we should probably get up then and go and eat, Harry said with a light laugh. Groaning, Draco cur curled into Harry's chest. Don't wanna, it's too early. That's what you said last weekend, but you still made me wake up. Okay, I'm going to pause because I need to, like, charge my iPad. Okay, I got my iPad charged. And, now. Yeah. Draco shifted to glare up at Harry. The difference is still. The difference is it's still breakfast time. You were asleep at noon. Harry brushed off Draco's comment. Doesn't matter. You still need to get up or we won't. Be on time. With that, Harry pulled away from Draco and watched amusement. And Draco stretched out his arms, trying to pull back Harry back. I'm going to get dressed. You need to get up, Harry laughed. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, Harry and Draco made their way to the great hall for breakfast, only separating when they had to go to their own tables. Harry watched from the Gryffindor table as Draco pushed down his eggs eggs around his plate slavery. The great hall was noisy with talk of the Quidditch game. People were already taking bets on who will win. Harry could feel the excitement in the air. Saw all nervous kids who were playing their first game today. Her mind did not being able to eat for his quid his first match would allow himself to get swept up in the excitement of the game. Think Gryffindor is going to win, Hermione said. Hermione asked, looking around the Quidditch players who were huddled along the table. What kind of question is that, Hermione? Of course Gryffindor will win. Rolling her eyes and laugh, she looked over at Harry. Are you and Malfoy sitting together? I think so, Harry said, eyes finding their way across the room again. 
I was going to ask if you want to sleep, sit with us, actually, if that's okay. Sure, I don't mind. Will Pansy and Zabini be joining, joining us? Join us? Probably if Jacob comes, Harry said. I can't believe that we hang out with them now, Ron said, shaking his head in disbelief. Especially you and Malfoy. People change, Harry shrugged. And we all muted. Mutrid quit a bit, Hermione said, taking a bite of her eggs. Sometimes I'm not sure that it's in, that's entirely true for Malfoy, Ron said, and laughed a bit, and Harry laughed a bit. Sorry. Goosebumps formed on the back of Harry's neck from the cold air. He was seated between Ron and Jago, high up in the stands, and the cold air set his teeth chattering. Harry tightened his scarf around himself to try to combat the cold air, but it didn't help much. Here, Draco said, offering this, his scarf to Harry with a light blush. I'm not there, Cloud. Use the heating charm, too. It'll help. Harry took the scarf with a smile. Thanks. Draco just nodded and turned his head to hide away the flesh of his cheeks. And Harry put the scarf on and casted the warming charm. He found Draco's hands intertwining their fingers together, their robes big enough to cover their hands. Harry gave Draco's hands a light squeeze, and he returned the gesture. The game began with Madame Hooch whistling, and then all players were in the air. The announcer was a small waving cowboy. He had been no older than a fourth year, Harry thought. The kid wasn't bi based, biased and so didn't constantly need McGonagall telling him he couldn't say certain things like Lee Jordan. Harry figured that might have been part of the reason he got the job. Harry looked out over the field to where Jimmy had cu currently had the quaffle. He was glad to see what well, she was the new captain of the credit team. She had seemed to be a good pick for the spot, and she was, as she was clearly very good at leading a team. He looked up, he looked for the new seeker now, finally spotting the, the young fourth year that had taken his old position on the team. The girl looked nervous. Harry noticed. He remembered how nervous he was his first game as a seeker. While he was watching her circle high above, she suddenly went in, into a steep drive, heading down the choice field, and it looked like Cooper has caught the, the snitch of, has caught sight of the snitch. Harper seems to have located the snitch as well. Deems, sorry, I really don't know. How to say, um, Robin scores 10 points to Gryffindor. Harper runs to the, into Cooper. She throws off course. She's thrown off course. Oh, wait, she caught up with Harper again. Cooper caught the snitch. 150 points to Gryffindor. Gryffindor wins 20, 240 to 110. The Ravenclaw's voice booms in pitch. Almost everyone except the Slytherin's. Slytherins cheered as the Gryffindor won, and Cooper descended to the ground to be surrounded by her teammates. Wish we were still seventh years. We could have been playing today, Ron said next to Harry, getting wrapped up in the excitement. Don't worry, we have our next game. At si we have our own game next Saturday against Ravenclaw. Gonna take a drink. Harry said. Following Hermione and Jacob's lead in the stick, standing up to follow the crowd of students back inside. Yeah, but it's just not the same, you know, Ron said, grabbing Hermione's hands as he stood up. Harry had let go of Jacob's hand when they stood up, but he wished he could take it again. He felt slightly jealous of Ron and Hermione's easy display of affection. We should hurry to the Great Hall and try and beat some of the rest. Getting into the door, Hermione suggested to everyone as they 
made their way down to the stands. Many students were mulling around the stands, and if they hurried, they could make it to the dining hall before they got trapped in a big crowd. Sounds good to me, Patsy said. I'm starving. I thought that match would never end. I wasn't even a, it wasn't even a long one. It was rather short for a Quidditch match, actually, Alan said. It still felt too long for me, Pouncey said, swinging her arms, her sides, her, her arms at her sides as she made it up the hill. When they got to the dining hall, Pouncey Drake dragged Draco and Blasey over to the Gryffindor table. Mind if we join you today? Pouncey asked, already sitting down across from Hermione. Sure, I don't mind, Hermione said with a smile back. Draco cautiously took a seat next to Harry. He felt and felt very self conscious as people stared to flitter as people started to flutter in the room and some looked over at the group confused. I was thinking, Pouncey said, that's dangerous, Blasey said, and Pouncey smacked him. I was thinking, she started again. Since winter break is coming up, we should host a bit of a party before everyone goes home for break. We'll bring the alcohol, Seamus said, sliding into the seat next to Ron and Jean falling. Great, Pansy said with a grin. I like the idea, Hermione said, but we'll need a bigger place in the common room. We could use the, the room if we're crying, that Harry suggested. I don't think that... <coughs> I don't think we should be using... That room for a party, Her- Harry, Hermione said. Why not? There's nothing that says we can't use it for parties, Ron said. It's the room of requirement, Hermione. We can use it for anything we require. And in this case, we require the room for a party, Dean said. Exactly, Ron grinned, and Hermione had to give in. I suppose you better pray it lets us in. Great. We have the alcohol and the room covered. We just need food, decorations, and music, Blasey said, serving himself from the platters of food that was lined at the table. The room can provide decorations if you ask it, I'm sure, Harry said. I have a record player we can use for music, and we can simply amplify it, Jacob finally said, trying to ignore the stairs that were being sent his way. He had no idea how Lacey and Pansy just didn't seem to care because they know you like him. Just food then, Pansy said, picking up a sandwich and taking a bite of it. We know how to get to the kitchen, so food wouldn't be a problem. We'll probably need help carrying it all there. Hermione hurried off to finish her homework and dragged an unwilling Ron along with her. After they finished lunch, and Blasey and Pansy hurried off as well with a silent, have fun, not that Jacob, too, which he replied with their particular hand gesture, leaving Harry and Draco alone. I was thinking, we could have a study date today, Harry said as they got up to leave the table. It's kind of late to go to the Hogsmeade now, and I have quite a bit of work for this weekend. Sure, Draco said. That sounds fun. You think? We can always do something else if you like. I don't mind. I know we have a we both have a lot of homework. Alright, Harry said with a smile. Reminded of when they worked together worked on homework together when they assigned their punishment by McGonagall. Now though, they were doing it as a study date. And Harry couldn't be happier. Okay. Anyway. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll be here for the next one. Bye.